guys, it's me. Uh, I'm sorry that it's taken a bit of a hot minute to get to the to get to this footage and um, editing it and everything. It's just every time I go and look back at all of these clips, it gets a little bit more and more heartbreaking every time. <laughs> um, just because I went into this race so well prepared, so well trained and fully peaked and ready to go and things just didn't go as planned which you come to learn that they never do and you have to kind of be prepared for anything on race day. So going out at the start I was going out like a bat out of hell. I was fearless and fired up and ready to go and the naive side of me thought that this this upcoming two kilometers was going to be the roughest stretch in that once we get to the harbor it would be nice and calm which it was and that it would be a surf home you'll you'll see how things actually pan out Are you guys seasick yet? <laughs> okay. I had waves literally trying to yeet me off the side of the boat here. Maybe a little bit hard to see right now, but you'll see it closer to the channel. Since we're so close to that break wall, we're actually going to start to get a lot of backlash of the waves against it. So it, it kind of starts to become a cluster mess soon, if it wasn't already. Some people had a different experience from me, but these were some of the roughest conditions that I've paddled in, and this race was a lot more challenging than I had anticipated it would be. Okay, yeah, here you can kind of see how the waves are starting to rebound back and throw you through a nice little loop. thing is that here I still have raging confidence. I'm whispering to my boat. I'm like, you're not going to let me fall in. It didn't even cross my mind that pulling was an option. I was like, there's no way I'm going in that water. I'm good to go. We got this.
am starting to eye up some of these waves, but I knew I had to be smart with it. Those waves were just going directly into the shore and I needed to go where that sailboat is pretty much to get into the channel. So I'm trying to find the best route that has a bit of a tailwind wave bringing me in, uh, but that's not going to crash me into the shoreline. The backlash off the shoreline is also evidently strong here. Over here! At this point, we were unsure if that sailboat saw Debbie. So she called out and I was, I don't know, trying to call out to see if maybe they would notice her by me calling it. I don't and know. And then here I panicked because I was like, who is this MF? passing me right now and then I realized that the, the boys were starting to catch up. I was like who's this woman that suddenly is cranking up at 12 kilometers an hour here? But yeah I knew the boys would eventually make their way up to the, the pack of women so there you go there's the first man to do it. And up to the left you'll see some of my loyal fans and subscribers. Hello? Just kidding I have no idea where they are. And for a brief, beautiful moment, I can catch some waves, finally! Okay, and this channel here is often notorious for just readily having an abundance of weeds. So in a second here, you're going to see me just yeet some weeds out of the way. Not today! Weeds, get out of my way! Just please enjoy this moment with me. As I can finally breathe for a second as I hop on a wave or two. Actually, I'm pretty sure I caught on a couple that were taking me like 13, 14 kilometers an hour into this channel. So that was the saving grace of the first half. And everyone warned me, check your rudder. There's no way you want to be plowing with any weeds on your rudder, so a nice little ugly face turn check there, and I was clear and good to go. And this next bit was a vibe for me, but uh, probably very boring for you because it's just nice, calm water. So I'll just skip past a lot of this. I was literally like patting myself on the back here being like, you just made it through the roughest part of this race, it's all going to be a breeze from here, you're just going to climb up to that eastern channel, you're going to have a bit of a headwind and then you're going to surf all the way home and be flying at 14 and so um, I was just basking in a moment here. I was wondering where the heck all the true north boys were and so I was so happy to finally see Albert. Okay, good talk. Bye Albert. <laughs> Have fun. Enjoy the rest of the paddle. Hope you make it in. Okay, and then these were my last 30 seconds of stability before a couple of mental breakdowns. I swear I was putting like a hundred percent effort and going five, six kilometers an hour for the next two hours. <laughs>
realize here that some of these GoPro clips are not doing the waves justice. So let's just insert some of Jeff's photos here. I literally just had to keep repeating to myself, like, you are a badass, Abby. You've got this. Look at these conditions you're paddling in, and you're killing it. <laughs> just hyping myself up internally. comes around and is praising the Lord and there ain't no Lord out there saving us today. Just us and our, our thoughts and our prayers. <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember this vividly because I was trying so hard to point my nose to the left to get further away from the shore but I was getting pushed so far to the right and also, that was my last dry moment. So, just to make myself feel better about myself, let's play somebody else's holy clips. What the hell is going on? you say mm, that you only meant well well cause you did obviously a little shaken up. I actually did have a bit of a hard time getting my boat back upright, but I think that was more just the shock of going in. It, it wasn't that cold actually, but it was more just like, oh my gosh, in the middle of a race, how did I go into the water? I still haven't even unraveled my leash from underneath the boat yet. I, um, I didn't unleash while I was in the water. I just got back into my boat and eventually I'll stop for a second and bring it back from underneath the boat there but here I'm still mentally going for it As you can see, compared to the beginning of the race, I am hella timid now. Like I said before, I went out with full confidence and hereafter I realized that going in was very much a possibility and was a reality for 99% of the athletes that raced here. I, I was playing it a bit more safe and was actually not scared of the conditions but scared of going in again. Say where the road goes. 
clearly that little bump caught me way off guard. As you can see, I went in while I was paddling on my left side. I, even watching back the footage, that little bump still kind of comes out of nowhere for me. But since I wasn't expecting to go in, I actually dropped my paddle here. So as soon as I went in, I threw the boat over my head and swam to grab my paddle. Once I did that, then I used my leash to kind of reel the boat back to me. But by that point, I was actually pushed really close to the island. And I was set up on a really bad line here as well. And not to mention, I was terrified of going in again. I was distraught. I was devastated. I kind of knew at that point I just wanted to make it in <laughs> okay. I didn't want to exert any more energy in trying to recover and I was, I, I don't want to say this, but I was mentally checked out of the race at this point and it was very defeating knowing how much energy, how many hours, how many kilometers I put into this race and training for it, um, but it is what it is, right? Everybody had the exact same conditions as me. It wasn't like I was put at a disadvantage compared to anybody else, so it just hurts more knowing that mentally, that mentally I feel like I had failed my training, but I didn't get much practice in these conditions, right? We don't really see waves like this that often in Ontario, and when we do, we usually just head directly into them and surf them back, right? It's not very often that I put myself in uncomfortable positions where I'm paddling with four foot Ama side waves, let alone very often that we get four foot waves as is at this time of the year. Maybe now it's a little bit more frequent, but I just would need more training in those conditions to be comfortable. And then finally I adjusted my camera. Uh, as you can see my speed coach is tilted upwards and it's actually stopped tracking at that point after my second fall. Uh, my GoPro dies in a second like my spirits and I struggle all the way back in. <laughs> um, but it was quite the learning experience so we'll chalk it up as that and I'll be coming up back next year stronger than ever. And unfortunately with the conditions two of the OC6s that were lent out for that race did not come back in the same condition that they were lent out in. Um, there's lots of repairs, lots of efforts that need to be going into um, fixing them or restoring them. So I will link the GoFundMe page in my link below if you'd like to help contribute. We're almost at our goal of 20000 to help restore these boats. Um, Marianne was kind enough to set this all up, so it's amazing to see how the community has come together. Um, but we just have a little bit more to go, so I'll link that below if you would like, um, and any help is obviously appreciated. So, thanks for watching.